All right, let's kick it off and get this started. Thank you all for joining us today for our Spotlight Series. Today we've got a great short program. We're going to try to get a lot of information for you today. Um, my name is Sarah Bellinger. I'm one of the Assistant Directors of Admission here at UMass, and I'm joined with a few of my campus colleagues and a current student. So uh, Brandy Sullivan and Marlene Navarro are here with Dining Services, um, and Eliza Michelotta is here with Wraps, and Lizzie Liguri is here. I'm actually going to have them go around and do a little introduction, and then we'll get started on some Q&A so you guys can hear a little bit more about each of these things. So Brandy, you wanna kick it off with an intro? Hi, good afternoon. I'm Brandy Sullivan, meal plan manager um, here at UMass and just um, excited to um, give you some information about meal plans. You'll have my contact information, I'm approachable all the time and just anything um, meal plan related, I'm, I'm your person. And my name is Marlene Navarro. I am the Director of Marketing and Communication for UMass Dining. So if you like the food, definitely let us know. But if you don't like the food, also let us know. Um, so we're big on our program with feedback and, and having student input within it. So I'm definitely your contact person uh, when it comes to any of those uh, situations. Hi everyone, my name is Eliza Michelotta and I am the program manager for academic programs in the student success unit. So I assist the director of academic programs in um, programming for first year students and transfer students. And my main focus is the RAP program, which you'll hear more about later. And in that section of the program, I will drop in the email so you can email us with questions about RAP if you have them. Hi everyone, my name is Lizzie. I'm a junior nursing student here at UMass and I'm also a tour guide for undergraduate admissions. So I give tours to incoming freshmen and transfer students. And I'm also here today to talk about my experience in the RAP program my freshman year. Great, thanks everybody and, and welcome and thank you for joining us. So I've got a first question and that is what's new with UMass Dining? Yeah, um, I will take that and actually to show you what's new, I think you guys actually need a um, visual. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so that you guys can be in awe with me. Let's see. Let me know if you can view it. All right. So um, the newest thing to come to campus for us right now is the all new Worcester Commons. Um, I'm not sure if anyone has heard, uh, we have four major all-you-can-eat dining halls on campus and Worcester Commons is actually one of our newly uh, rebuilt from the ground up. Um, it's an all-you-can-eat dining common. Uh, it's open 7 a.m. to midnight. Um, the concepts are new, newly developed. So we have 12 concepts focused on Mediterranean, Latin, um, just authentic global cuisines that you guys can enjoy on campus. The most exciting part for our team and, I, and I'm sure our culinary team, which you guys are fondly aware of, is the new teaching kitchen. Um, so in this new building, there's actually a teaching kitchen where we're going to do even better chef demos um, that students can actually participate in. And one of the biggest things for us recently has been students wanting to make some of those recipes at home. So we've done like a YouTube channel series for UMass Dining. And so now we get to use this fun new uh, teaching kitchen in that setting. Uh, the third floor has fine dining, but more specifically, I think, and what benefits the students most um, that's really exciting is the student space. So we have lounges, meeting rooms, fitness centers, like soundproof music rooms. You could do yoga. Um, and then we also have a Worcester Cafe on the first floor, which focuses more on like grab and go smoothies, get your like sandwiches and delis to go. So um, it's a very exciting. Uh, it's beautiful. Uh, we have a ton of footage of it from the inside. I know everyone is kind of craving uh, not only the menu, but the, the willingness to go on campus and be able to try it. So we're doing our best on our end to give students that sort of experience to, to understand what's coming. Now, I really wish I had had lunch before this because this has really made me even hungrier than I was. <laughs> but that looks amazing. And I know students are gonna be so excited um, to check this all out. One of the things I get a lot of questions about when I'm 
um, speaking with prospective students and families is about how dining services support students with various um, dietary needs, such as allergies or special diets. Yeah, Brandy. Yeah, I'll, I'll grab that one. Um, so all locations have a variety of options um, so that students will, with food allergies are able to dine comfortably and achieve a well-balanced diet. Um, every food item has a menu identifier featured here in the slide. Um, just it includes the ingredients, the allergens, nutritional facts, um, and more. So students may view each item's nutritional profile on site um, in all the dining commons on, in our retail locations. Um, the menu identifiers are um, there, the recipes, um, the UMass Dining mobile app is another um, resource. You can visit our website, plan your menu. Um, you know, our, our mobile app and websites includes allergy allergen filters, so students can view um, what items are safe for them to consume at a spe specific dining location. If students need further assistance, um, you can contact our registered dietitians, contact information's there. Um, I'm also available to accommodate meal plan selection um, when needed. If we need to change something um, to support a student, we, we are in the market to do that, in the business to do that. Great, thank you so much. And I was interested in hearing a little bit more. I know students are, are always asking, but the the test kitchen and the ability to make the recipes sounds amazing. Um, but we do get asked how much student input is there um, or do students get any decision-making process basically in, in any of the dining services? Great question. Um, we do have a student ambassador program. Um, so we actually hire students um, to come and kind of do, you know take part in a um, secret shopper kind of activity. Um, we invite them to all of our events. Um, any of our new menu items, our um, visiting chefs, um, they're able to come kind of, you know, review us, uh, give us our the feedback. Um, we, it is the main reason why we are um, UMass Dining number one, campus dining nationally, um, because we do listen to our secret shoppers, our student ambassadors. Um, we're open always. Marlene and I get, you know, we're running surveys and um, really taking into consideration um, what the trends are and the needs and, you know, not missing, you know, connection with the students and, and what's new and trending. Still on mute. Thanks. That was Awesome. And I know from hearing our tour guides talk about UMass dining, that there's a whole lot more that goes into just dining services and serving meals and providing these amazing um, dining experiences. Can you talk a little bit um, about ways that UMass dining influences and participates in the community? Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure actually if anyone's heard of, um, so in 2013, Chancellor uh, Suwaswamy signed the Real Food Campus Commitment. Um, and so UMass Amherst actually became one of the largest schools um, in the country to commit to sourcing 20% of their budget for purchasing food as real food by the year 2020. Um, real food is defined as local, fair, ecologically sound, and humanely raised food. And at the time, UMass Amherst was the only uh, university in the nation to sign that agreement. And so today, or last week, as the results came in, it was through a third party. Um, we actually ended up surpassing that goal, um, and we hit the 26%. Uh, instead of the projected 20, which is always great news because all that means is that we have, it just proves the way we work with over 100 local farmers and how we genuinely care about our student farm, um, the way we purchase things on campus and work with our culinary culinary team is to basically go through like a, a radius of purchasing. So first we go local, then we go through mileage. And then if we really can't source anything seasonally, then we go ahead and work with other vendors outside of here. So I think it's always been important for us to kind of just make sure that we focus on our local economy first um, and then proceed 
from there. So I think it's been very helpful for the economy in that way. I'm still on mute. Great, thanks. Um, can I ask a follow-up question or just a general question that I know I also get a lot is, is there one of the dining plans that's most popular and one that you might recommend to first year students? Yeah, residential students are all defaulted to the unlimited 250. So that's unlimited access to the four dining commons. Um, come and go as many times as you want, 7 a.m. to midnight. Um, we do not close, you know, in between meal periods. So we're very, very flexible with our students. We want to, um, they're busy schedules. So we want to make sure that it's an open fridge. Um, again, you get the 250 dining dollars. So we have 30 plus retail locations. So everywhere you turn, there's, um, you know, a place to grab a coffee, a smoothie, um, just a, a quick healthy snack. So it's, um, it's our defaulted meal plan because it's the one that works um, for you to get acclimated on campus and not have to worry about, um, you know, having snacks in your dorm and um, that kind of thing. So that is your defaulted meal plan. There are other meal plans that are, can be, you know, specified for different um, situations. If you were heading home every weekend, um, you know, maybe a smaller meal plan. But if you are here and you're part of campus community, that unlimited 250 would be my recommendation. I, I know if it were me, I would go as much as I possibly could um, because it's so awesome. Thank you so much for um, sharing all that information about dining with us today. We're gonna switch gears a little bit and talk about our residential academic program. So I'm gonna put Eliza and Lizzie on the hot seat for a few minutes and ask some questions. Um, we get a lot of questions about this. We talk a lot about it. Our tour guides talk a lot about it. We use the word RAP as an acronym. Um, can you tell us what is a RAP? How do students get involved? Absolutely. So RAP stands for Residential Academic Programs. And it has a really long history here on the UMass Amherst campus. It's actually been around for over 50 years at this point, um, which is pretty exciting. It's seen different changes over the years, but as our program stands currently, um, wraps are what we call a package deal. They have an academic component and a residential component that comes together to bring, to create one program. Um, so generally, students will enroll in a four credit gen ed class together um, in our different types of wraps, which I'll explain in a second, there's different course requirements. Um, so our largest group of wraps are called gen ed wraps. And those are the wraps where you'll enroll in a four credit gen ed course. And then we have school and college wraps, um, which are open to students who are coming to the university in the exploratory track or in a declared major. So we have different types of wraps um, within that category, some for specific majors like communication majors, engineering majors, and then we have what we call connect wraps, which are open to any student within a given college. So we have CNS connect wraps, CNS stands for the College of Natural Sciences, the Humanities and Fine Arts, those types of wraps. We also have wraps designed specifically for honors students, and those wraps um, are held in the honors community on campus. And we also have wraps for students um, by invitation. Uh, so before wrap sign up in the spring, students are identified and invited to apply to those wraps. Um, and there's a lot more detail I could go into about those different types of wraps. But because we're short on time, um, I will just recommend that you go to our website to read about the different um, wraps and to see the courses that will be offered. Currently, you'll see the fall 2020 information, but keep checking back as fall 2021 information will soon be updated as we um, move into planning. But in essence, wraps are a package deal. You live with the students who you enroll in a course with. And I know all the students that I have ever interacted with at UMass have loved their rap. So I think it's something we talk an awful lot about in a super positive way. Um, and I know Lizzie can put some input in, in in a minute, but can you talk about the benefits? Why a student should join a rap? Absolutely. So as I mentioned a little bit before, 
um, it's a real opportunity to make the larger community at UMass much, much smaller. So you have the opportunity to enroll in a class with 30 or less students, which is pretty unique for your first um, semester on campus. A lot of your classes at UMass in the beginning will be large lectures. So the opportunity to enroll in a small section of a gen ed course is pretty cool. Um, and as I said, you're living with the same students you're enrolling in some of your classes with. So all of your students in your wrap will live on the same floor or in the same building. So you'll be able to walk to class together. You'll go to dinner together. It's a nice way to start building friendships um, and get to know people your first semester on campus in a built-in way because you're, when you're joining a wrap, you're, you're joining for similar reasons, most likely. Um, and in terms of academics, uh, we've seen that students who join RAPS have higher GPAs throughout their college career. The first year retention rate is also increased in RAPS students as well as the um, four year graduation rate. So that's pretty exciting too. Um, additionally, uh, it's, it, it builds lasting friendships and you also get to interact with your instructors in a different way than you would um, if you didn't join a RAP. So I'm gonna hand it over to Lizzie to give us a little bit of um, information about her RAP experience. Yeah, so I decided to join a RAP my freshman year as an incoming student. Um, I actually got the idea from when I first visited campus, I met with um, my Dean and some current students of the College of Nursing. And one thing that they mentioned was the RAP program and how I would be able to live in a community or on a floor with a bunch of different nursing majors. And our RA was actually um, a nursing major as well. So just kind of like a community for us. So I lived on the 21st floor of Kennedy Tower my freshman year in the nursing RAP. It has great views up there of the sunsets and of the Pioneer Valley, which is awesome. Um, but I loved being in the RAP. I made a lot of amazing friends. We studied together. We went to class together. Definitely had dinner together. Shout out to dining because we obviously miss it so much being off campus. Um, but like Eliza said, with the long lasting friendships, um, my personal experience, I seriously can't talk enough, like, highly enough about my RAP experience because I actually am living in a house in downtown Amherst with five other girls, all of which were in my rep and all of which were on my floor freshman year. Um, they became my best friends. We absolutely love living together still, even a couple of years later. And um, I'll share one quick story. I know we're short on time, but I always tell it on my tours um, just to kind of give a example of how you're really living with students that are so much like you. Um, my first semester here in the nursing rep, I went for a run and I fell and I went back to my dorm and I had a scrape all up my leg and I kind of texted into our group chat and I said, does anyone have, you know, gauze, band-aids, something like I, I'm really struggling here. And about eight or nine different nursing majors were knocking on my door like a couple minutes later with first aid kits ready to go. So I always tell that story because, you know, a bunch of nurses living on a floor together, what else could you expect? So I, I loved my experience in a rep. I love that. They couldn't resist. They were on the, they were on the job. They if were just ready to go, ready to start practicing. Right away. And if, if I have a, if I have a crisis on the UMass campus, I'd like it to be surrounded by nursing majors. That's where I feel the safest. That's fabulous. Um, Eliza, can you talk a little bit about what, in what other ways RAP support students or what kind of what that support either looks like or feels like? Absolutely. So um, as we just heard from Lizzie a little bit about how her fellow RAP students supported her, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we do for our gen ed RAPs since they're, we have the most gen ed RAPs in our program. So all of the instructors who teach in the gen ed classes for those specific RAPs are all graduate students. And the RAP office provides a lot of support for those instructors. and um, one of our main focuses in that regard is infusing college success strategies into the curriculum for the gen ed courses for those gen ed wraps. So I think that's one way that wrap definitely really supports students because we want to help students transition from high school life to college life and really set them up to succeed their first semester in college and beyond. Um, additionally, in gen ed wraps, we host a program called generating pathways to success. So 
um, in the fall, we host well-being sessions for um, all of the Gen Ed RAP students. It's about 900 students. And that's in partnership with the Center for Health Promotion and the peer health educators who, who work there. Um, and this semester we are hosting four, well, we have like 50 well-being sessions throughout the semester. Um, it's a lot, but um, there's four different topics in those sessions. So each one is one of the four. So we're teaching students about stress management, about building connections, disrupting negative thoughts. And we have a session about mindfulness and mindful meditation too. So we take into account both the academic success as well as your well-being, um, because both need to be uh, supported well to do well in college. Um, and also, as I mentioned earlier, the connection between uh, instructors and, and RAP students is really something that RAP students get. They get that extra support from their instructors because they have more personalized one-on-one -on -one interactions in the small section of the gen ed class that they'll enroll in together. That's amazing. So much like I wanted to go have lunch at Worcester after hearing all that wonderful things about dining, I now want to sign up for a wrap. So what do we do? What do we tell students? How do they do it? When do they do it? What's their next steps for for wrap? That is a great question. Um, so the number one thing that you're going to want to do is head to our website. website. Uh, it's umass.edu slash wrap. I'll drop that into the chat. Uh, there is no chat. Is there a chat? No, There's no chat. Uh, there is, but it's tricky. Okay. It's, but it's umass.edu <laughs> slash wrap. Um, and you'll be able to see all of the information that we have for fall 2020 to kind of get an idea of the programs that we offer. Because we're probably going to offer the same programs for fall 2021. Um, and please keep looking at the website for sign up dates and instructions. We're currently in the process of revamping our sign up process. Um, so there will be a specific timeline. Usually wrap sign up opens in mid-May. So that's before you'll come for new students orientation in the summer. So right now, keep checking the website if you're interested in wrap. All pertinent information will be there. And if you have specific questions, before new information is on the website, you can email us at rap, R-A-P, at acad.umass.edu. And um, we're also hoping to host some like open Zoom sessions so that people can come ask us questions. Uh, we don't have those details worked out quite yet, but like I said, all of our information will be updated on the website on a rolling basis now until the summertime. So, we don't have a ton of information on the timeline yet, but check our website and we will be there to help. And I know in all of our admission events that we do for admitted students, we talk about dining and wraps all the time. So the, we'll, there's lots of reminders of, hey, check out the website and here's when things open up. So we'll, we'll, we'll send those, those reminders um, to students as well and, and talk, you'll hear us talk more about it. I did, there is a chat that um, a couple of students have thrown in a couple of questions. So we have one or two minutes left. So I'd love if we could just field these um, questions. And one, I'm pretty sure I know the answer to, but um, Eliza, I think you will definitely know the answer. But um, the question is, are there all any all female um, gender dorms? Um, uh, well, I think that there's some I can't speak about RAP specifically because we I know for a fact that we don't have like a building for RAP that's single gender, but I do know that some buildings have single gender floors um, as well as gender neutral floors, but I don't believe there's uh, just buildings for one gender. I think that would probably be, housing would be, a, be able to better answer that, but I know they do have single gender floors. And I will say Lizzie jumped in there, but you can jump oh, in sorry. out loud, yeah. Lizzie. But yeah, yeah I, um, I jumped in there. But um, so for residence halls in general, we do not have gender specific buildings because the buildings are rather large and hold a lot of students. Um, but we do have gender specific floors. Um, I lived on a gen like an all female floor my freshman and my sophomore year. Um, 
for example, the towers in Southwest. So those are those big 22 floor buildings that we were talking about. Every other floor is typically male, female, and then again, gender neutral housing and some co-ed. So um, it just depends on a preference. Great. Well, that, those were the questions that had, had come in um, in, our, in our chat. Um, and I wasn't able to, to get to them while you folks were talking, but thank you so much. And this just opens up that there's so much more to learn about wraps, but about residential life and also about dining. So um, please check our website. Um, Marlene or Brandy, do you have any parting, um, you know, how to get more information and what a good timeline is for prospective students in terms of finding out uh, best info? Marlene's going to share um, our contact information if you want to, um, in that, that our dietitians are a great resource, um, you know, so, so definitely um, look into that, you know, and, and any specific questions, I'm available as well. Great. Yeah, and I, I would just say too, if um, anyone's interested in always giving us feedback, just know our program is completely based on that. So you can find us through direct messaging us through our social media channels. We have a UMass Dining account. You can go to umassdining.com. There's contact information. We definitely encourage you guys going ahead and reaching out. And then, you know, if you know what the latest trend in dining is and you want us to try it here and work with our culinary team, whatever you guys need, we're, we're excited to work with the team. That's awesome. Could they come on over and make my dinner for tonight, or is that out of the <laughs> we'll we'll work on that for phase two? Yeah, <laughs> is that out of the question for my? <laughs> I, nothing's ever out of the question for, for my us. getting <laughs> my my self fed tonight. Um, <laughs> thank you all. And so, if anybody, you know, you can take a, a screenshot or a picture of Brandy's contact information. But we're all on the website. the uh, The way to reach us is is usually very simple. You know, type in our department and you can, you can get to us all. We're here in admissions to help you through this process. Um, and our campus partners have been amazing and supportive. So thank you all so much for coming today. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Lizzie, for jumping in and, and helping us out today. So have a great day, everybody. Go UMass. Thanks a lot. So have a great day. Bye. <laughs>